as our fossil fuel inheritance depletes, which it inevitably will because it is finite, there's only a certain amount of it uh, available, people are looking at other ways to to provide energy for our societies on the assumption that business as usual will somehow continue to be possible because we're a clever species and the assumption is that we will come up with something. One of the options that is very frequently discussed is nuclear power because that is also considered to be a carbon dioxide free uh, source of of power. So this this is of interest to people who are thinking in terms of climate change as well. But there are a lot of concerns with nuclear power that don't get enough attention. For starters, the net energy for nuclear power, if you look at the whole life cycle, is not particularly impressive because really you would have to consider the amount of energy in compared to energy out for everything from construction and mining all the way through to decommissioning, and this will be decades and decades. There's a lot of energy consumed up front when you produce a nuclear power plant. So you have to have a large surplus of energy as well as money to be able to consider building nuclear power plants in the first place. If you don't have a large energy surplus, then you can't construct something that's going to take 10 years before you get any energy return back. And then if you produce energy for a few decades for the life of the plant, you then would also have to have energy available for managing the waste and decommissioning the reactor, which could be another several decades away. I think if you look at the amount of energy in versus energy out over that whole life cycle, there would be hardly any net energy, hardly any energy gain. All the energy would come during the production phase. I don't think there will be energy left for the decommissioning phase. And I don't think we're putting nearly enough effort into dealing with nuclear waste. This has proven in the case of Fukushima to be a major problem. A lot of effort goes into the safety of nuclear reactors. It's called defense in depth. So there are many layers of protection between the core of a reactor and the environment. But there's almost no defense in depth that goes into storing nuclear waste. Nuclear waste mostly sits in what are swimming pools, or effectively swimming pools, near the plants that produced the waste. Sometimes it goes into dry cask, but there's a lot of material stored in ways where there's not much of a barrier between the waste and the environment. And because this waste continues to produce heat for a very long time, it has to be managed, it has to be maintained, cooled over a long time. So you have the same vulnerability to loss of station power that you have for a reactor itself. If you can no longer cool spent fuel, it can melt down in the same way that a reactor core can melt down if you can't keep that cool. We saw this happen at Fukushima, where the nuclear waste was stored in pools at the top of reactor buildings that were not within the containment. So when the station blackout happened, you not only had a meltdown of the reactor cores, you also had spent fuel compromised. And in at least one unit, the most likely explanation for the explosion at unit three, as it happens, is a problem with the spent fuel, an explosion in the spent fuel pool that seems to have spread nuclear fuel up to two miles away from the plant. So the potential for enormous environmental contamination from being unable to manage spent fuel is very significant. Now, even with reactor cores where there is defense in depth, what they do is they, they come up with a design basis accident. In other words, what they consider to be the worst case scenario, and they design safety systems that will be sufficient to address that worst case scenario. But there have been several instances where they have not planned to cover something that was really quite predictable. And certainly the earthquake and tsunami in Japan comes into that category. The plant was designed to cope with an earthquake of approximately eight 
a magnitude 8. We had an earthquake of a magnitude 9, which is vastly more powerful. So earthquakes of that magnitude would have been predictable for that area. They did not predict it, so they didn't design for that to cover that size of accident. What happened was the containment systems were actually fractured in the earthquake itself. Then the tsunami came along and wiped out all the backup generators. So what happened was you had a complete loss of power to the site. So no ability to cool the reactor cores or the spent fuel in some of the, uh, the, the units as well. So you had at least three meltdowns. What is continuing to happen there is leakages of radiation. So there was an enormous amount of uh, radioactive water that leaked out from the fractured containment systems. They were constantly pouring in water to try and cool these, these molten cores down, but that was leaking straight out, heavily contaminated into the sea. We had explosions that put nuclear material into the air. So there's been an ongoing, months-long, continuing contamination from that accident. And none of that was covered in the design of that plant. So there, when you actually have an accident, as we did at Fukushima and as we did earlier at Chernobyl, the amount of energy and resources that has to go into managing the accident is also something that one really should be thinking of in terms of of the net energy for nuclear power. If the risk of an accident is uncomfortably high, then we need to think how much extra energy do we have to have on hand to be able to deal with the potential for accidents. And this is absolutely never factored in. So we actually have a system that requires active management for, if not not just decades, but possibly for centuries. If you look at the spent fuel, this is longer than any human society has ever actually managed to continue to exist. The assumption is that we would continue to have uh, electrical power, which is a very complex system. We can't say that we will have that ability to control spent fuel in hundreds of years' time. It simply is not predictable. So I think we're running significant risks. We're leaving the potential for a lot of problems for generations down the line. We will have used all the energy produced. We will be leaving the mess to our children and grandchildren and beyond probably with no energy to deal with it, no money to deal with it, and perhaps not even the knowledge, because nuclear engineers are aging rapidly. Relatively few young people are going into this field. People may not even remember how to decommission a nuclear reactor in a few decades' time. So I think when we consider taking this route, we really are playing with fire, if you like. We're doing something where we are running risks that we don't fully understand and we are leaving the potential for an enormous mess to the future. So I would argue that it is actually not a good idea to try and maintain our energy business as usual through the use of nuclear power. I don't think we could actually achieve it in any case because the net energy, as I said, is not very high and the uranium ores that are depleting, which means the net energy of nuclear power will be getting significantly worse over time. But even if we could achieve it, I would say it's not a path we should take because of the inherent risks. And the, the health impacts of Chernobyl are still highly controversial 25 years later. I'm sure in 25 years from now, we'll still be arguing about the health impacts of Fukushima. But I think the health impacts are vastly larger than the accepted mainstream view. And I think this is partly because the research was simply not done. And my view is they didn't want to know the answer, so they didn't do the research that might have shed light on what the health impacts have been. I think they have been very significant, and I think we simply should really not contemplate taking actions that could compromise the healths, health and lives of potentially hundreds of thousands of people with one accident. Considering how many plants there are and how much spent fuel, it may be a lot more than one accident we could be contemplating. Large areas can be rendered uninhabitable or at least unsafely inhabitable for decades, if not centuries. I think this is something we should not do.